Amen. In fact, you're trying to do everything right. Amen. Right. They said, who sinned? This man, his parents, this man or his parents, that he was born blind. I like what Jesus said. Because Jesus was bringing a new talk. Revelation to these people that no, it's not necessarily that he didn't name all his parents. Jesus said in verse 3, Jesus answered, Neither had this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Yeah. Listen to what Jesus said. Jesus and his parents didn't do anything wrong. He didn't do I'm trying to say, I'm going to be calm. <laughs> Jesus said, his parents didn't do anything wrong, neither did he, but this man was born blind so that God can bring me around to work a miracle in his life so that God will be glorified. Right. Now, wait a minute, that sounds jacked up. Can you say jacked up in church? That sounds messed up to me. That somebody was born blind so that God's work can be manifested in him. So this man had to go all of his life struggling in darkness, begging, and people ridiculing him and making fun of him. And, and, and because he was a beggar, he was born blind. And you, you already know you had some of the saints point fingers at him. Mm -hmm, somebody did something wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she going to their divorce because somebody did something wrong. She did something. Or they're going to disrupt because somebody did. He's sick because somebody did something wrong. See, that's the way people's mentality is. Yeah. But sometimes God will allow things in your yeah. life so that he can come along and bring glory to you and him. Yeah. I can imagine this man kind of figure out, okay, what did I do? What did I do? What did I do to cause this? Anybody sitting out there ever wondered that? Yeah. What did I do? Yeah. What did I do to make them treat me this way? What did I do to make my body malfunction this way? What did I do? I've had somebody ask me one time, they said, Pastor CJ, I've been paid back for all the sin that I've done in my life. And you know, some people really believe that. I've been paid back for all the wrong that I've done. My answer to them, I said, did you? Repent of your sins and ask Jesus to be the Lord of your life. They said, yes. I said, well, they all that's washed away. What can he repay you for? Yeah. That does not exist. I said, but I want you to get the right attitude and understand that Jesus said, neither had this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. And when God dropped it in my spirit, baby, I got, I got excited because now the works of God are getting ready to be manifest in me and you. Jesus said, nobody did anything wrong. But God is going to get the glory out of this. So this is what, I, I began, I said, God, I, I, I don't know how y'all talk to God, but I'm very reverent, very respectful of God. But I, I keep it real. I said, God, Amen. that don't sound right to me. Amen. You know, I don't talk to y'all, thou most holy, right. thou <laughs> most holiest of all the incandescent light. He's my daddy. Yeah. Yeah. How do you talk to your dad? Right. Amen. I said, Dad, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. You mean to tell me this man was born blind so that Jesus could come on the scene and touch him that God's works may be manifested? The Lord assured me of something. He said, listen, you don't read the rest of that man's life in this book. He said, but I guarantee you, his latter end was better than the glory to God. He said, because I used him to show my glory, his latter end was better than what he went through in the beginning. And I'm here to tell you, if God is going to use you to get work and glory out of your life, your latter end is going to be better than the stuff that you went through. So this is why we can look at him and say, your ways. When the doctors told me what they told me, they told you what they told you. The first thing I say, God, you're going to get the glory out of my life. You're working another testimony. Because many people get, 
mixed up when, when they say, I must have done something wrong that I'm going through this. Jesus said, neither this man nor his parents did anything wrong, but the works of God should be manifest in him. God is going to manifest some works in your life. Listen, you may, your relationship right now may be towed up from the floor up. Just messed up. And that person may leave. And you left there. God wants to come and tell you, listen. It's not that, see, see, because let me tell you this, I know people right now, I know people that have done everything they know to do. You ever anybody done everything they know to do? Mm -hmm. Trying to be the best husband you can be? I mean, trying to be the best one you know how. Right. And they still want to go. Mm -hmm. Trying to be the best wife you can be. And they still want to go. Mm -hmm. Trying to be the best parent you can be. And they still don't want nothing to do with you. Trying to be, you know, trying to be the best you can. When stuff like that happens, you have to step back and say, God, how are you going to get the glory out of this? Because everything that happens in our life, before we were saved, God didn't get the glory. But now that I'm saved, everything that happens to me, whether it be good or whether in the eyes of others it be bad, I see glory coming out of it. Somehow, someway, God is going to get the glory out of it. Somehow, someway. And that's why I stand back and say, God, I don't know how you're going to do it, but God get glory out of this. So Jesus said, no, nobody did anything wrong. That the works of God should be manifest in him. And I tell you, if we, if we track that man's life, his latter year was so much better than the things he'd gone through. That's why Jesus related when, when, when a baby is born in the world and, and, and God's blessing, a woman may go, go through travail and she may go through labor and all of that, but when that baby is born, she forgets a lot of that. Until the child gets old enough to start talking back. Let me say that. Me say that. She forgets a lot of that. You remember, you know, the, the ladies that you had children and you go through labor and labor, and, and same like with my mama, the labor hours, the more I messed up and acted up, the hours got they increased more and more. You know, I'm acting the fool, and my mom said, boy, I went to nine hours of labor with you. Then I kept acting up, you know, two weeks later, boy, I went to 24 hours of labor with you. You won't talk crazy to me. Then, you know, months or two later, boy, I was in labor seven hours, seven months with you. <laughs> but once the child is born, Jesus said, they forget that labor, and all they see is the blessing. So let me tell you something. Once God begins to work out what he's working out in you, you forget all of that pain that you've gone through, and now you see the glory that God has worked in your life. Let me give you another definition for glory. All right. Now, we understand glory is, is weightiness and heaviness, but another definition of glory is God's thinking purpose in the earth. That's another definition of glory. God's thinking purpose. God has a purpose for you. And it seemed like God, sometimes it seemed like it's so unfair that the only way to get glory is that you got to go through something. But guess what? The only way you're going to get it done, there's got to be some pressure. That coal is just a lump of coal until it goes through some pressure and some heat and, and some, some, some devastating things that happens to that lump of coal and then a diamond is created. Guess what? God wants to create some diamonds in us. I'm just trying to explain what you're going through, why you're going through right now. It's not that you did anything wrong. God is going to get some glory out of your life. Yes. Yes. All right. Because I know I'm living the best I know for God. I know I am. So I ask a question, and don't let anybody lie and say you can't ask God questions. Yes, you can. Just don't ask them doctor questions. Yeah. Yeah. I asked them all the time. I said, God, now listen. I know what you showed me. I know what you see. I said, it, it, it is, is this part of me getting uh, more grounded and stable than you? And, being weighty because another word for glory is a weightiness and a heaviness. And God is trying to make some of us heavyweights in the kingdom. But the only way you become a heavyweight, maybe that's what you got to get in the ring with some heavyweights. Yeah. 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 
See, see the day, the day of you being just a flighty Christian and, and, and tossed to and fro and, and you know by every wind of doctrine, but that's coming to an end. God is looking for people that will stand on his word and say, I'm not moving. That's it. Amen. So now when things happen in your life, see, see, stuff going on right now with some of us, y'all ain't showing up real. <laughs> see, like young folks say, it, 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 it's real out there. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. It's getting real. And, and like I say, sometimes you just got to lay your body on the word. Yes. Yes. Stop. I'm standing on your word. Yes. And if God, if you don't move, yes. it won't happen. Yes. And I'm not just talking about just physical. I'm talking about in relationships. I'm talking about in your finances. I'm talking about in your, your, with your children. Yes. Sometimes you got to draw a line in the sand and say, God, I'm standing right here. I ain't moving. When you do that, get ready to be ridiculed. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. Get ready for people to talk about you. Yeah. Get ready for people to start saying stuff like, now God gave you common sense. <laughs> get ready for the doctors to, to try to shame you. Get ready, and now if the good doctors really they really want to see you benefit. They shouldn't do that, but a lot of them tell you, you know what, you, you're being stupid. Because I'm not going to tell anybody, don't take your medicine. I thank God for medicine. Matter of fact, some of it is very good. <laughs> I'm not going to tell nobody, don't take your medicine. But baby, there comes a point in time for your life and my life, we got to determine where is the cutoff? Where is it where you're going to stop practicing on? Yes, that is it. What is the line where you say, I've got to stand on God's word? Because I get a little leery when they prescribe something for you. Say, now this is this is going to help your problem, but it's going to create another one. So I'm going to write you something else to take care of that one. Now that one's going to create another one. Then. When you start taking stuff and you start reading like it's going to cause blindness and, and, and loss of hearing and bloody school and I'm going to... Now this, now this is real. Now I know I said that, but I'm telling you, this is real. And you have to determine, God, you got me or what? Yeah, that's it. Amen, Pastor. That's it. That's it. Yeah. I'm not gonna tell you to stop taking your medicine. I'm not gonna stop taking mine. But there is a point in time to where you got to determine, God, whose report will you believe? I told him. I said, y'all, I told y'all go this far. That's what you do. I said, we're not going no further. I said, we got to see if this is true or not. Right. If it's not true, we need to stop talking about it. Right. If it's not true, we need to close this book, go on and just get drunk somewhere. <laughs> now, some of y'all don't take that literally, okay? Because this is true. Don't show up in next week to me. You say it. is not true. What are we doing here? If God is, listen, if God died and nobody told us about it, we're wasting our time. But if he's still God, if he's still on the throne, then this word has to be true. Then we got to stand on this word. Now some of y'all don't get offended, but this is my Bible. This is what I do. CJ, I know you've been you've been serving God a long time. He said, what would you do if you found out that none of this was true? So what would you do? I had to think about that. Because y'all, my whole life is tied up in this word. My whole life is tied up in this word. I know it's true because I know God has moved time and time again. Yeah. And the things that happened in my life and your life couldn't have been nothing with God. Yeah. 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 But he said, what if you found out all of this was nonsense? 
And it were not true. What would you do? I said, well, probably the world would be still in a much better place because me believing that this was true kept me from doing harm to you. So the world was probably still in a better place. I said, but, but if I found out this was not true, I said, I don't think I would want to live because my whole life. See, this is where you can tell people who, 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 whose life is tied up in him because if he were to disappear, I would listen. But here's the truth about it. He is real. This is real. And we can stand upon this word, and God still does miracles. He still does. He still blesses. He still reconciles. He still does. He's real. Glory to God. All right. But then someone else asked me another question. Because you know, when, when you're in the workforce and people want to find out something, they want to talk to you. Especially if they, they, they're trying to make up their mind and they're watching you to see what you're going to do. Brother, brother, sister, well, you guys now, you preach it every time you go to work. Because they're watching you. When something goes wrong on the job, they're looking at you and talking, okay, see how you're going to handle it. If the Christians over there talking, ah, ah, what are going to do? They're watching you. But somebody asked me a question. They said, CJ, they said, what if all of this is real, God is real, Jesus is real, but there is no heaven? He said, what if this is all you get right here is him? I thought this for a second. And I said, this is all I get is just him. And after I die, there's nothing but just him. How many know that's worth living for? Just to experience him in this life. But the Apostle Paul said something that's very true because somebody asked him this question. Paul said, if, if, if 